Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to special Thursday, February 22nd edition of Established to Run's NBA DFS Injury Analysis Show. I am your host, Mark Dankenbring, as we come back here from the All-Star break. Joined, as always, by Mike Gallagher, who, after some much-needed time off, looks refreshed. He, so We were not recording for so, for so long that he gets logged out of StreamYard, and we now have a new background. And so, you know, we're all, we're all getting settled in here post-break. But how you doing, Mike? How was your break? How are you feeling to be back? Yeah, it feels good to be back. Definitely ready to go here. Yeah, I cleared my cache and kind of reset my computer, so all my login for streaming stuff was lost i'll get it back so but i uh, didn't want to i just didn't, didn't kind of cut to the chase but yeah good break hung out with some friends went to vegas got to meet chris uh, oh, on our minutes team i uh, had a lot of fun when i wasn't at the tables but when i was at the tables not a good time Crap, craps did not treat me well uh rough blackjack go uh i bet roulette i bet you know i dunk off some money at roulette i bet black six times in a row red <laughs> six times in a row so, oh my gosh uh, yeah that that's, was when you know, that's when you know it's going bad for sure yeah i, I didn't like, i didn't quite make that. it to vegas i didn't quite make it to vegas but i did watch rounders over the break so that's i mean nice. about halfway there in the, in the mood but yeah happy to be back and man the nba is greeting us with a nice 12 game slate to kick it off and we have a big big slate as well tomorrow so a lot of teams on the front end of the back-to-back -back, uh should be an interesting first slate here as we work our way back in with you know plenty of players on new teams and everything so let's hop right into it uh, uh, hopefully we can make this relatively quick for a 12 gamer mm -hmm. first first game of the night um we have brooklyn at toronto it is the front end of a back-to-back -back for toronto the raptors are just have their g-league guys out um and then the nets pretty clean as well cam johnson is back for the nets I believe you're on starters jersey watch there. So how about we start out with the Nets and and what you think the starting lineup will be for them tonight? Yeah, new coach. Um, sorry, pulling up. That's right. Um, True. Box was running pretty slow. So we got Kevin Ollie taking over. Jacques Vaughn predictably dismissed after losing by 50 to the Boston Celtics. Pulling this up now. My computer not uh, ready for the season to start here. Um, so yeah, we're going to probably see Cam Johnson start. We saw him get managed uh, returning from injury. Um, uh, something that's probably going to be still managed. We got him pretty much mid twenties, but could come out there more. Um, so yeah, expecting him to start with Cam Thomas. Still expecting to start. Ben Simmons should be back in the starting lineup. Uh, Mikel Bridges and then Nick Claxton as well. So let's talk about Kevin Ali. Uh, he did a presser already, and he's saying you, you have to play hard. Uh, he says that there, you know, them being last and 50, 50 balls recovered is something they need to fix. Um, and his big, his big quote was that i'm going to be using is he wants hunters uh so he wants guys if they're not hunting they're they're not going to get minutes uh they play the raptors today so you know shout out to rock the dinosaur hunter from uh the n64 days it is showing my age a little bit but um yeah so we're giving them and then one other thing to note too sometimes like when we come back from the break a lot of teams had multiple practices so a couple guys who may have been a little iffy uh as a starter maybe that kind of gets you know, switched so we could see a couple of curveballs today i'll try to lay out some of that for you the nets would certainly be one with a a the new coach and b the time off but for now expecting ben simmons cam thomas cam johnson mikhail bridges and nick claxton to start sounds good yeah with the acquisition of dennis Schroeder at the deadline and now all the you know main starters back and healthy for the nets we currently have 11 guys projected for them do you th do you think ollie will run you know, a pretty clean 10 man rotation or how, how deep do you see him going here as, as he takes over? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it seems like they're going to probably go tight. Uh, I don't really have a great feel for him. First time NBA coach. We saw him head coach UConn. So uh, it seems like a guy that would probably give more guys minutes. So yeah, as you mentioned, we're, we're playing it pretty conservative here. Sounds good. Yeah. I could put, potentially see Jalen Wilson maybe cut out. He was getting some more minutes before the break. We'll see um, if they try to develop him or if Dennis Smith Jr. you know, gets cut out or, or something along those lines. Maybe uh, Dayron Sharp doesn't see any minutes if they play small. It'll be interesting to see how this rotation kind of fleshes out under the new coach. The Raptors side, just G League guys out, so nothing really injury-related. Do you have any news or notes on the Raptors you want to let the people know about? No, not really. You know, Darko just talking about um, you know, tightening the rotation a little bit, cutting out Chris Boucher um, in there. So, yeah, it's pretty much straightforward. We saw a pretty good minutes of minute quickly, but, yeah, mostly the same situation here. All, all the talk was about Scotty Barnes' all-star, so it didn't really get too much uh, to glean from the darker stuff I went to earlier. 
Cool. Let's move along to game number two, and that will be the Detroit Pistons at Indiana Pacers. It is an island game for both teams, which is a little rare on tonight's slate with a big one tomorrow. On the Pistons side, Isaiah Q, Isaiah Stewart is a Q here with a left ankle sprain. If he plays, do you expect him to start tonight um, over Fontecchio? And how do you see the Pistons rotation playing out? We still have Cade probable here with left knee management and Quentin Grimes is doubtful. So he looks unlikely to make his Pistons debut tonight. Yeah, let's start with, as you mentioned, Stewart returning from an ankle injury. So it sounds like he's got a pretty good chance to return. I would expect him to start and boot out Simone A. Fontecchio. Uh, so, you know, ankle sprain, got through a full practice today, went through shoot around for Isaiah Stewart. So pretty much every indication here is he's going to be in. So expecting Fontecchio's minutes to get cut down pretty good after we saw him play a bunch uh, in his debut. So, uh, there's that. Cade's good to go. You know, we'll probably use these P tags. We saw him play back to back for uh, spreads. A pretty big issue here. Uh, a pretty big one. A somewhat bigger one than I thought. Um, given the way that Isaiah Stewart's back, Aaron Neesmith's out on the other side. I think that could be a problem. But um, yeah, certainly expecting Cade, Jaden Ivey, uh, Asar Thompson. I think has has done enough to hold his job. Uh, Stewart and Duran, and then we'll see what happens with 48 minutes. We saw 48 play a pretty good bet. Could see him getting cut down. Because uh, they're still going to want to find minutes for Fontecchio. Maybe they don't go as small. We saw a lot of three-guard lineups uh, to close out the year. Uh, and then the other question we have to figure out is, James Weissman's still going to play. We saw they were talking about trying to keep his development going. We saw he was out of the rotation, especially when Stewart was in. So we have like a hedge there. We have like six and a half minutes for Weissman. But wouldn't be surprised to see him completely go away here. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I think the pivot point here is if, if Wiseman's cut out, that would make Stewart the backup five and then open up a little more minutes for the wings, as you mentioned, Fournier there. And they also acquired Troy Brown Jr. and Fontecchio, you know, over the over the deadline. So a lot of wings to potentially work in here for the Pistons. Um, on the Indiana side, it's relatively clean. We do not have Tyrese Halliburton listed on the injury report any longer. So that's a great sign. But we do have Aaron Neesmith out, out with a right ankle sprain. Uh, Doug McDermott sub for him in the second half of that game and played 15 second half minutes and then Ben Shepard closed. But of note, Benedict Matherin was out for that game that Neesmith got hurt. Um, and then we have our typical Q tags here as well for the Pacers, some G League guys that are listed questionable. And then we have the Jalen Smith Q tag back with back spasms. He missed the final three games heading into the all-star break. Do you have any insight on Jalen Smith's potential availability tonight? Is this back in the fake Q tag realm? And then who do you expect to start with Nee Smith out? Yeah, I don't have a great read on Smith. He's gonna get he's gonna get tagged Q for the rest of the season. So um, we'll see. But yeah, aggravated it. Not a, not a great sign there. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, Ben Ben Mather not playing is a pretty big factor. I expect him to start for Aaron Nee Smith. Still expecting Shepard uh, and McDermott to get some pretty good minutes here. Uh, and then also Miles Turner, who missed the last game, should be back pretty full. And then. Big spread on Halliburton. So we saw earlier in his like ramp up, they would pull him out. They would pull his plug real quick. So with the bigger spread, we're dinging him because of the spread and like a, a potentially pretty quick hook. But yeah, expecting Halliburton, Nemhard, Ben Mather, and Miles Turner and Pascal Siakam to get the start here. Cool. That all makes sense. And now without Neesmith and obviously Buddy Heald traded at the deadline a little bit. More minutes available in the backcourt there for the Pacers. So Ben Shepard should still be in the rotation, even if uh, Matherin draws the start there. Okay, let's head to another East Coast matchup, the New York Knicks at Philadelphia 76ers. It is a front end of the back-to-back -back for Philadelphia, but we'll start on the Knicks side here. They're getting a little healthier with Isaiah Hartenstein mm -hmm. expected back. He is not listed on the injury report, uh, but still a few key rotation pieces out with OG Ananobi, Julius Randle, and Mitchell Robinson all out, but Tibbs now has, you know, at least nine players he's comfortable playing as of now. Um, so what do you think? How do you think Tibbs approaches this rotation tonight? Do you think he'll try and stick eight or probably, you know, eight and a half with potentially one of Miles McBride or Jericho Sims getting cut down? Yeah, you could definitely see somebody getting cut down. We talked about this last time. If they'd be a little more willing um, to play pressures at the five, but if they're not going to do that with Hartenstein, like I think that's probably dead. But hey, you know, as I mentioned at the top, maybe they they changed their plan here. So, uh, and then Dante DiVincenzo returning from a hamstring. He said he's feeling pretty good about the situation. But we dinged him. We saw him play outrageous minutes when they were really, really thin. And we saw, you know, dudes playing mid-20s. So we dinged him a little bit just because Alec Burks is a trusted Tibbs uh, player. Boyan's pretty capable as well. So maybe just not as much upside. 
because he wasn't really competing with anyone there. Um, so yeah, keeping an eye on that situation, but for now expecting uh, Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, uh, and Hart, Precious, and Hartenstein to start. should mention we're expecting Hartenstein to be limited. We saw him hurt this injury earlier this year, and it was a pretty – harsh ramp up um, mm-hmm. regarding like take, dropping him down to like teens. So we put a little bit of weight into that. Obviously the time off seems fine. They were expected to return. So he might be healthier this time around than he was the first time around just because of the time off. That all sounds good. Uh, let's head over to the 76ers side. We have a few out tags remaining here with Robert Covington, Joel Embiid and DeAnthony Melton all still out for Philly. We do have an interesting questionable tag here as Nicholas Batum is questionable after missing the last nine games before the all-star break. And then we also have Kyle Lowry expected to make his Philadelphia 76er debut tonight. What do you have any, do you have any insight on Batum's injury and potential return tonight? And then how many minutes are you expecting for Kyle Lowry? Yeah. So uh, Batum is more expected to play than Melton. That was what Nick nurse said yesterday. Certainly the injury report matches that, but really it sounds like they're pretty optimistic that Batum will be out there. Do they bring him on the bench? I don't know. Um, they've been pretty aggressive to start him, so I think he's going to start uh, here. Uh, so, yeah, expecting um, – yeah, uh, the actual, yeah, I think I – think, so the next question is, is it Buddy Heald or is it Kelly Oubre? How does those minutes split up? Don't really have a great feel for that yet. I think Buddy makes sense in the first unit, so maybe we go back to Oubre kind of super sub situation there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Lowry's minutes, I, I don't know if there's going to be that many for him. He'll probably, you know, cut out the rookie councils, maybe cut out campaign. We saw campaign pretty good bit. So probably, like, you know, upper teens, maybe hits 20. Don't have a pretty high expectation for Kyle Lowry, despite the Nick Nurse love from the Raptors days. Sounds good. I'm definitely interested to see the overlap between Maxi, Lowry, and campaign and how they handle those, mm-hmm. you know, three pretty small non-defensive minded guards at this point in their career, especially for Lowry, who was a great defender early on, but now has you know, lost a step or two. Um, okay. Let's head along to the next game on the slate. As we try and work our way through this 12 gamer, it's another Eastern conference matchup, the Orlando Orlando magic at Cleveland Cavaliers. It's a front end of the back-to-back for the Cavs. Um, on the magic side, we have Paolo Bancaro midday questionable tag with an illness. So obviously those are never ideal. And then we have Markel Fultz here listed out with injury management, you know, after a full week off, not necessarily ideal, uh, not even a back-to-back for the Magic. So any thoughts here on Paolo on the illness and any comments here on Fultz as they continue to manage his injury history? Yeah, not great uh, to get the the out tag on him. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just management. And you know, we saw him miss the last game before the break. Uh, and that led to um, that also. They also didn't have Jalen Suggs in that game. Suggs is fine. He'll play a top a lot. He's playing like low 30. So could see Suggs play a pretty good bet. Um, probably going to see Anthony Black in the starting lineup for him. So expecting Black, uh, Jalen Suggs, Wendell Carter Jr., Franz, and then Powell if he goes. As you mentioned, illness tags. We don't really have a great read. A lot of uh, all star players, you know, popping up with, uh, with illness tags here uh, for whatever that's worth. But um, yeah, if he doesn't go, we know they they they've gone to like Chumo KK. We saw Jonathan Isaac get a start earlier in like a big jumbo lineup. So I kind of lean Isaac. There is a little bit of talk up from Jamal Mosey about Jamal uh, about Isaac. So keeping an eye on that um, against you know a big Cavs team, they they got to go big. So that's kind of why I'm like like maybe leaning Isaac and just running out of a bigger lineup for for those purposes. Um, but and you know we'll see if Powell is going to be. You know, 100%. Obviously, matchup's terrible. Going to probably see a pretty good bit uh, of Evan Mobley, Dean Wade, uh, and you know, maybe in a little bit of a core. The Cavs are just so, so good um, defensively. And uh, I mentioned I did my podcast yesterday about perimeter stuff and just looking at some mm-hmm. of the metrics for a core and Mobley's like, oh, my God, man. These guys are just so, so good. Uh, so shout out to your, your Cavs. Yeah, I'm excited to watch this one, and I agree. I think if Paolo is out, I, I would personally expect Jonathan Isaac to start. They were ramping him up closer to the 20-minute range um, ahead of this game, and this game against the Knicks was a back-to-back where he was limited, so just got those mm-hmm. 15 minutes, but I do think he would be most likely to start if Paolo misses and you know maybe play between 20 and 24 minutes, uh, especially mm-hmm. coming off this long break, and as I mentioned, no back-to-back for them. So if Paolo does miss, I think Isaac makes sense to slot in there. On the Cavs side, you mentioned uh, All-Stars listed questionable with illness, and Donovan Mitchell fits that bill. He is questionable tonight. 
Uh, it was mentioned that he was at shoot around this morning, which is typically a decent sign of a player's availability. And then also on the Cavs, we have no minutes limit for Evan Mobley and Darius Garland now that we are past the all-star break. So any insight here on Donnie and uh, any other notes on the Cavs? Yeah, just Donovan was, you know, he got he got a couple extra days off for the rest of the team for the All-Star nod, which is pretty common. Luca had that. A couple other guys got extra time off, um, which they deserved. Um, you know, despite all the uh, the hatred for, for All-Star game. Imagine watching the All-Star game. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, sorry to any, I thought I offended anybody there. I would never. Um, so, yeah, no more minutes limit. That's a huge deal. We saw Garland starting to get, like, close to normal. Same with Mobley. They were kind of bringing him in together, checking them in together. So, yeah, expecting, um, you know, we have like low 30s because this is a pretty big spread, eight and a half. The Cavs are awesome. They just don't lose games anymore. Um, and then the other important note here was J.B. Bickerstaff said they're going to still try to go 10 or 11. So we have like nine and a half with Sam Merrill being the 10th. So, you know, I think they're going to try to sneak in some Deed Wade, try to sneak in some minivan, George Niang uh, and those guys. So we may not see the mega minutes uh, from Donnie here. Uh, maybe they're going to kind of bring them along slowly after the break. So. Yeah, I just wanted to note that, you know, that was one of the more interesting comments that I heard when I was running through the pressers this morning. Yeah, and in the past, JB has led us astray a little bit. I feel like he always wants to play deeper, and then once it gets into game mode, he ends up tightening it up a little bit. So I think just kind of having some sprinkling and hedging on, on those ninth, 10th guys makes sense to me. All right, let's move along to another mid-coast eastern – or excuse me, we are heading west coast um, for a Western Conference matchup, the Phoenix Suns at Dallas Mavericks. It is a front end for Phoenix. This is a TNT game. We know there's some history here between the Suns mm -hmm. and Mavs. So hopefully an exciting game tonight. Hopefully all the stars are out. And so we can start on the Phoenix side here where Bradley Beal is listed questionable with a hamstring injury that he aggravated before break caused him to miss the last essentially, you know, two games got injured very quickly um, in the, in the game mm -hmm. he missed. And then, so do you have any insight on Bradley Beal's availability tonight as he works his way back from a hamstring injury that has, you know, caught him a couple times this season? Yeah, he's had ever since like his last couple years with the Wizards, he's had a lot of hamstring injuries. So expecting mm -hmm. a minute if he can go. But um, he sounds pretty good. You know, they put him through practice. Vogel's optimistic he can return. Uh, it is a back to back, but they might play him on the front end in, in a national TV game. You mentioned the hatred for the Suns Mavericks. Uh, there, so I'm like leaning in. We haven't projected in, obviously, with a little bit of a minutes cap. We've seen them run run Beal pretty high, and maybe they don't do that anymore. He's just runs so so bad. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. We also are going to get Thaddeus Young uh, on the team. Frank Vogel said the he said he'll use him as a four and a five. Just the way he phrased it to me, it seems like they're going to use him more as a five, which makes sense. Um, and I think that's in this spot that makes a ton of sense, right? We know teams like to play that small switchy stuff. That's a good thad a thad scheme, but not a lock he plays. There's a lot of like I'm going to be a mentor uh, quotes from Thad, which is kind of player coach speak, saying like you're not an ex every night rotation player. So yeah, we've got like a little bit of a hedge, taking some minutes off Eubanks, uh, Bull Bull, not necessarily a lock for minutes anymore. We'll see what they do with Josh Kogi. We know they like Josh Kogi when it's like a guard centric uh, offense. Um, and then, yeah, Royce O'Neal's obviously been playing well. He'll pick up Luca for a ton in this spot here. Um, was running a they were trying to bring him along slowly, but just with the injuries, they like you know made him their main bench piece. Um, off there, and I should also mention Devin Booker, uh, got ejected last game, uh, right off the bat with five minutes. So, yeah, he'll be back in full. And we got really big minutes in this game. I will talk about Luca in a second. If Beal were to miss, do you think they would potentially start a Kogi for the Kyrie Luca matchup, or do you think they would still go with Eric Gordon? I think they would still go Gordon. Um, they seem to pretty much trust him there, but um, it's going to be you know a pretty good amount of Royce O'Neal and a Kogi. Might be pretty tight here. This is probably, this might be like if you had to pick a game where you know five or more players could get thirty six or more minutes, it's probably this one. I, th I think like. I think Durant's pretty close to lock. I think uh, Booker's pretty close to lock. Luca's pretty close to lock. Uh, so that's that's four. Four guys are pretty much locks for like 36, 37 minutes if this game's close. Nice. And yeah, we should have the star power on the Maverick side. Only Dante Exum is listed out for Dallas. Luca, Maxi Kleba, and Derek Lively are all probable with all have broken noses, uh, which is kind of funny. <laughs> at some At some point, the Mavs might be tossing out the all mask team here uh if this mm -hmm. trend continues but any 
concerns here with the Mavs on these probable tags or, um, you know, as they work in PJ Washington and, and Daniel Gafford, I guess that's probably the biggest question here is yep. who do you think starts for the Mavs at center? Do you think they'll go with lively or we saw, um, you know, Daniel Gafford getting there as lively was kind of working his way back from this broken nose. Yeah. You can make a case. This is probably the biggest starter thing to watch tonight. Uh, looking at some Mavericks, clips you know it's uh, you know it's got to hop back into it after the break uh starters jersey watch my computer's running slow so i'm not going to pull it up but pj washington and uh derek Lively were in the first unit it looked like they were going to run him out there i don't i don't know why they would pull him out like Lively was playing so so well for them so there was also a quote saying they're going to try to use pj washington in the post uh as well as gafford and that just struck me like you wouldn't use them both in the first unit so i don't know piecing it together i think derek Lively starts we've got them split right down the middle um actually i forgot to mention on the bradley beal front speaking of you know all the masks we're going to see in this game he's going to still wear a mask and he had a procedure on his nose um oh, yeah. so uh, frank vogel said that's behind him so he's good there maybe that helps his breathing but again the hamstrings the headlight there sorry i didn't want to miss that note um so yeah i'm expecting luka Doncic, Kyrie irving josh green pj washington and Derek lively the second to start certainly we have a lot of center minutes here we got 44 between the two of them we got them split 22 22 um so you know, just a few minutes of the Maxi Kleba slash PJ Washington stuff. So yeah, uh, still Kleba's in there. Tim Hardaway Jr.'s mid ceiling's not there anymore. Airplane mode has been turned off. Um, and then Hardy's minutes could be cut into a little bit here. But um, yeah, the the starters and we saw PJ Washington play a pretty good bet um, in a you know the non blow game when they or actually was yeah. So anyways, um, expecting pretty heavy minutes. Yeah, PJ Washington could be included in that. Like hey, he might play thirty five too. Uh, I think they they really want to get him going. I'm really curious to see who he guards. Um, mm -hmm. Probably going to be Durant. Like they've been putting him on SGA. They've been putting him on a lot of like really dynamic offensive players. So uh, curious to see how PJ Washington handles Kevin Durant. Yeah, I'm interested to see how these kind of fringe rotation guys, Jaden Hardy, Derek Jones Jr., Maxi Kleba, how they fit in with Jason Kidd. Because throughout most of the season, the Mavs have been banged up, and we've seen basically like seven or eight players that Kidd really feels comfortable relying on. And now that that number is up closer to 10. So I'm interested to see if he runs it, continues to run it tight or spreads it out a little bit more and gets those guys in on the back end. So we'll definitely be watching for that. And again, hope Beal suits up on the other side. So we get a, a full matchup of stars here on the TNT game. Um, let's head to an Easter conference matchup, Boston Celtics at Chicago Bulls. This is another rare Island game for both teams here. So um, some potential for full minutes on the Celtics side. We have both, uh, guys that they acquired at the trade deadline are available. That's Jaden Springer, who they acquired from the 76ers, and Xavier Tillman, who they acquired from the Grizzlies. Do you expect either Springer or Tillman to have a role tonight for the Celtics? Um, and yeah, what are your expectations for the rota rotation here? Uh, yeah, not sure. So uh, Tillman available, but there were some comments from him uh, in a Mass Live article saying that you know he wasn't like a lock to play. So we got them basically split with the unicornet. Could see them play bigger. We've seen some unicornet, unicorn um, pairings uh, as well. So they could run a little bit bigger here, especially when the Bulls are going to run that double big on the other side. So kind of watching for that. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a great feel if Springer's going to play. We've seen him get managed from this ankle. They, they were going to play their guards a pretty good bet. Uh, obviously, Peyton Pritchard's been playing pretty well. So yeah, we've got him like basically out of the rotation. Um, and then, yeah, you know, um, Jalen Brown basically got managed the last game. Um, so assuming his pride is still okay from the poor dunk contest showing, uh, he should be pretty much a full go. And then obviously uh, Jason Tatum, uh, certainly to get that Alex Crusoe matchup, who, uh, you know, despite the Bulls ranking 16th in defense, uh, Crusoe made, made my number two for uh, toughest perimeter matchup. Yeah, that was a great pod that just dropped today. So everyone make sure to to go listen to Mike's matchups pod. Always insightful information there. Um, on the Celtics, you know, I, I kind of envisioned Springer and Tillman mostly as insurance options mm -hmm. for the Celtics. I would not be surprised if, if neither played tonight as they, you know, kind of continue to get eased in. Um, certainly not expecting very many minutes if they do get out there. Okay. On the Bulls side, um, I'm glad you mentioned the double big lineup with Andre Drummond because I'm interested to see how much they deploy it tonight because Al Horford is likely to play almost all at power forward uh, when he comes off the bench, most likely. Um, and then on the Bulls side, Torrey Craig is out here with a knee sprain, so that could open up some potential four minutes for Andre Drummond as well. Um, on the Bulls, we still have Zach Levine, Lonzo Ball, and Patrick Williams out, so they will probably play it pretty tight. But again, here, the, kind of the, 
the you know hinge point that we've seen the last few weeks is how much is Io DeSumo and um, Alex mm-hmm. Caruso going to play versus Andre Drummond's kind of alongside the other you know three starters and Vooch, DeMar DeRozan, and Kobe White. So what do you think about potential overlap here for Drummond tonight? Yeah, probably some. Uh, we'll see if they're willing to start him. I think they've got to start Caruso for the wing defense mm-hmm. here. Uh, and as we mentioned, this is a what I mentioned this last week when we were talking about this game that's on the screen. They broke out the Drummond Vooch unit together. Up, you know, it was when Drummond was off the bench. This it was against the Cavs, so I think that that was really re- the reason why. I mean, you just got to start Caruso for Tatum. I mean, that that would be just way too much overthinking it. So expecting, uh, um, you know, him to start, uh, and then De- Demar and those guys. Uh, Io obviously playing a pretty good bit, but still expecting some overlap. Loss, loss of Tory Craig's pretty rough here. Uh, so a little bit more Terry and Julian Phillips filling in there, but. Um, should also note Billy Donovan said um, the other day that they're going to run shorter stints, but it won't affect the minutes. I mean, they're playing so much. Tamar uh, and Kobe White are one and two in minutes played so far this season. So it sounds like they're like I talked about Bickerstaff, you know, running 10 11. Seems like Billy Donovan's more than content playing his guys' heavy minutes. Yeah, and the heavy limits have led to a, a play-in spot right now, and that seems where the Bulls are destined to land at at the end of all this. No trade deadline moves and destined for the play-in. So shout-out Chicago yeah. for staying right in the middle. Um, one, more th- one more thing to add, that um, yeah. I found a worse bet than Kobe White Unders, and it's apparently playing <laughs> playing craps in Las Vegas. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were 0% win rate on, on Kobe White yeah. this year. So, so I'm I guess pretty much zero in craps. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, let's move along to next matchup of the night, which is the Houston Rockets at New Orleans Pelicans. This is a front end of the back-to-back for both teams here. On the Rockets side, we will get Fred Van Bleet back, and he will be back on um, back in the starting lineup. So, again, the big question here is kind of what will happen to Amen Thompson. We still have Tari Eason out here for the Rockets as he works his way back from a lower leg injury. And then Reggie Bullock is questionable with lower back pain, but he is likely the odd man out here tonight with Fred Van Viet Black. So not many. We, I think we have him at zero right now for Bullock anyway. Um, uh, my question to you is, how do you think Amen will be used off the bench? Do you think he's earned kind of a larger role as potential six man? Or how do you see this rotation playing out for Houston? Yeah, so I think one, I'm, I don't know, here's what I'm thinking. So, you know, I said that, that we could get a curveball on starting lineup. What are the chances Amon starts over Jalen Green? It's not zero. Uh, mm-hmm. We saw in the last game, this game was close. He was benched. Um, it was a, a tough scene. They we, we we had an Aaron Holiday under in this game, and we were like, where's Green? Where's Green? Where's Green? We, we need a sub. We need a sub. We need a sub. Uh, and then you know, Holiday didn't get subbed out. Um, and then uh, Amon Thompson fouls out, and they bring in Nate Hinton. Um, didn't really get any commentary, but you know, he was terrible in this game, man. So, I mean, I would, I would set the, I would set the line at like, you know, 15% that they just start Amen over green. That's something I definitely want to watch today. Uh, cause Amen was good, man. Um, I'm curious to see how, how that starts, but his minutes are pretty secure. Uh, we did ding green a pretty good bit here. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, something I'm certainly watching here in this spot, but Fred Van Vliet, we got a little bit. Of a, of a cap on him pretty decent spread as well but expected to come back pretty much the whole time so should be pretty close to full yeah and we as you mentioned we did see Aaron Holiday get up there a bit uh in a few games without Van Vliet so that that mm-hmm. upside roll off the bench will likely go to Amen I would think and Aaron Holiday will kind of settle back into the teens with his minutes definitely not as near as a uh, high of range I don't think for him but certainly we'll be interested to see how Jalen Green works into this rotation as you know a third year developmental player for the Rockets um, you know, just interested to see how his development continues to go for Houston. On the Pelican side, relatively clean here, but we do have Dyson Daniels listed out after undergoing meniscus surgery. And then Brandon Ingram is questionable with an illness. Um, again, another all-star guy here with Q with an illness. How do you think about Ingram uh, his and his potential availability for tonight? Yeah, illness tag. Don't have a great read there. Um, Trey Murphy would almost certainly start for him. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. There was actually a note from Willie Green saying that they'd be more willing to go tight uh, with the rotation. That was, I believe, asked about Dyson Daniels. I couldn't quite hear the question, but um, that was kind of my read there. So, um, yeah, also commentary to get the ball in Zion's hands. We saw Zion's dimes really start to spike, uh, kind of to close up the break here. So expecting that to be pretty strong. And then CJ McCollum's, CJ McCollum's minutes have been, like, a little weird. We were trying to figure out his minutes and. 
just hasn't had the ceiling. It's been a lot of blowout, but that, that was just something that's noteworthy there. Uh, and then obviously Larry Nance continues to kind of cut into Joe Val. That that won't be as important, but there's been there's been a lot of so uh, Val uh, Sincunis had like a great game and then a bad game uh, against Valachunas. So that'll be something to, to watch and see how Valachunas can handles the goon. Nice. And I, I thought it was a little notable here that Zion is off the injury report. It is the front end of a mm-hmm. back-to-back for the Pelicans. And we saw him getting listed questionable with that foot issue, but he pretty much played through it all. So I'm happy to see him off the injury report so we don't have to deal with the fake Q tags here anymore. All right, let's move along to the Clippers at Thunder. It is the front end of a back-to-back for both, but injury reports are super clean here on both sides. Uh, the Clippers you know, don't even show up on the injury report because they have no yeah. one listed. And then only G League tags for the Thunder side here. So um, we do have Gordon Hayward expected to make mm-hmm. his Thunder debut. He is not on the injury report. And then Bismack Biombo is available there as well. How do you envision the roles playing out for them and their potential Thunder debut tonight? Yeah, it can be pretty quick. We don't need to talk about the Clippers. Uh, Zubat's minutes limit should be off uh, low 20s there. Uh, Thunder side, yeah. Uh, Hayward, how much is he going to play? Mark Dagnall said he wasn't willing to publish his rotation was the word he used. So, um, yeah, expecting the same starting lineup. You would think J-Dub is immune. Obviously, SGA immune. I think Dort, just because of how he's used, is pretty immune. So, Josh Giddy, could he lose some minutes? I think that's on the table. They're going to ramp him up, though. So, I think that it's going to take, you know, five, six, seven games before he's going to be getting, you know, low 20s minutes or anything even close to that. So, we got him in the teens. That's Hayward. Uh, again, cutting into really the fringy guys, the Aaron Wiggins, the – you know, Jalen Williams is of the world, a little bit of Isaiah Joe and those guys. But, um, and I don't think it's going to affect SGA's handling role, but um, he's been out since Christmas um, for a guy who's been hurt a lot. So, yeah, again, I don't think this affects the high end guys. It could certainly affect Giddy, but I'm not expecting that to happen yet. Yeah. Okay. C's bench has played really well this season and remains deep. So I think even Hayward's. You know, best role would probably be in the 20 to 25 minute range off the bench. It looks like we're kind of right around the lower end of that range tonight uh, in the upper teens, right around 20 for Hayward. And then any insight on Biombo? And and do you think he'll take any minutes away from Jalen Williams? Definitely could. Uh, Again, Dagno wouldn't really say he's going to be available today, but uh, could see him getting cut down. Don't really have a great week. Jay uh, Jay Will was playing great. You know, he had uh, Mm -hmm. his blocks were up. He's uh, someone that I think is important here uh, for the Clippers. So, um but yeah don't have a great read there cool next game on the docket tonight is the charlotte hornets at utah jazz it is the front end of a back-to-back for charlotte um on the hornets side mark williams and Lamelo ball still remain out and that opens the door for all five of the newly acquired players at the deadline for the hornets to be you know pretty big factors in the rotation we've seen trey Mann have a big role which you expected along that trade he's been playing point mm-hmm. he has at least 13 rebounds plus assists in all three of his starts which thought was pretty notable the scoring hasn't quite been there but um you know when he shoots it well he can get up there and as i mentioned all, all five of the new guys are in the rotation here as leaky black nathan mensa mm-hmm. and nick smith jr are on the g league and they were getting uh lee smith and leaky black were getting rotation minutes for the hornets beforehand so how do you expect this rotation to play out post all-star break yeah, it should be pretty similar. I'm on a little bit of a red alert if Grant Williams starts over Nick Richards. We saw Grant pick up some pretty big closing minutes, uh, increased kind of handling role, driving closeouts more and getting downhill a little bit more. I don't know, they're playing great with Grant Williams on the floor. So that's, you know, one of these, call it five possible starting lineup things I've got noted there. Um, but yeah, Trey Mann's been fantastic. You mentioned the role's been really good, the handling, the drives. He's been driving a ton. So playing great there. Um, and then, yeah, we know Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, uh, and those guys should be solid. Certainly expecting Cody Martin to hold up here. Um, big spread in this game. You know, Utah's not playing very well, and they're getting nine and a half. I'd rather obviously much better at home, but I thought that was a bigger spread. Can't quite pull the trigger there, um, but, you know, try, I'm trying to dig myself out of my hole in Vegas. So I'm, I might fire at some stuff I'm not more willing to fire at. Sounds good. It is uh, potentially bookmakers factoring in the front end of the back to back for Charlotte and Utah. You know, typically one of the hardest place to plays places to play. Um, so maybe that's factored in a bit more here mm-hmm. on the Jazz side. They are pretty clean on the injury report. Only G League guys listed out. The big move before the break was Keontae George inserted into the starting lineup. He's been playing, you know, low to mid thirties minutes. So any updates here on the Jazz rotation with Keontae George as a starter? It's Keontae's show. Uh, they said it's time when they finally started him. So really no reason to think that they're going to pull him out. You know, you trade your, you know, a third of your rotation 
uh, at the deadline, and you're you're pretty much saying you're ready for these young guys to go. So certainly expecting a heavy dose of Keontae, my guy, George, to close out the season. You can see the score there, 140 to 137 in the last game before the break. And Charlotte and Utah are two teams DFS-wise that mm-hmm. we weren't super eager to invest in early on in the season because they were mixing in you know 10-plus guys and um, didn't, didn't play in too many competitive games. So if this game does stay close, it could sure, certainly be a fantasy shootout uh, with the rotations condensed a little bit on both sides. Let's head to another high-altitude matchup in the city I am currently residing in, and that is Denver. They will host the Washington Wizards. It is a front end of the back-to-back for both. Um, on the Wizards side, we have Isaiah Livers still out here, and then DeLon Wright was bought out from Washington mm-hmm. over the break. He is now on the Heat, so uh, the Wizards down DeLon Wright in their rotation. How do you expect things to change for them, if at all, without DeLon Wright? Yeah, we'll see if Jordan Poole's minutes are more secure. We saw DeLon cutting to him at times. Uh, Landry Chamet should be locked in. We'll see if they bring in uh, you know, Johnny Davis or Jared Butler or somebody like that. Uh, we know that they want to play well, cool Bali a bit. So there's a chance they could condense it. Um, should note, uh, this is a huge spread, biggest spread on the slate. I think it's 15 and a half now. Um, so yeah, keeping an eye on that. We've got guys docked pretty good minutes. And then as we mentioned, again, taking out the blowout factor, man, Brian Keefe does not mess around. He's playing his guys heavy minutes. Uh, Denny Avdia is, uh, you know, apparently got also, you know, all-star snub narrative. Uh, he's just been going ham um, really since the all-stars kind of were announced there. So I uh, will see if Denny can keep it going. Um, and then, yeah, like I mentioned, Jordan Poole, are his minutes safer? Not so much today because the big spread, but something we'll definitely be watching to close out the season. Yeah, Denny Avdia came on really strong ahead of the break, and uh, that deals with with usage as well as just the minutes ramped up here. As you can see, a, a really tight rotation there with uh, you know five players over 30 and then Koulibaly at 27. Uh, so really tight there from Keefe, as you mentioned. Um, on the this Nuggets was side... Kyle Kuzma. I should mention this was without Kyle Kuzma, but even that yeah. aside, Denny's been playing upper 30s on the regular. For sure, yeah. Good note there on Kuzma. All right, on the Nuggets side, we have a few probable dags to deal with here. Contavious Caldwell-Pope is probable with the hamstring injury he was battling ahead of the break. Jamal Murray probable with left leg inflammation, and then Julian Strother probable with a left ankle sprain here. So any concern over these Nuggets playing? You mentioned the big spread tonight, first game uh, post-break, and also the front end of a back-to-back for Denver. So any issues here with the with the probable tags? Um. Maybe uh, we've seen some uh, P downgrades. You know, I think Michael Porter Jr. was a P to out. Um, what like a week? You know, I don't know, six seven games ago, ballpark. So feel pretty good. They said they're basically going to play. So expecting them to be out there. We're concerned with a minute limit on KCP. Uh, a hamstring injury, aggravated hamstring injury. That usually means players are going to be managed for a longer period of time. Talked about beer earlier in the show. Um, but yeah, it seems like Jamal should be good to go. Mike Malone's Mike Gold Malone, excuse me, um, said. <clears throat> that uh, he's more concerned with the health of his players than the number one seed. We saw what they did to Joker last year. They were sitting him out, all that stuff. So for now, I think we're okay. So I think they'll be picking some spots. I don't know. It's probably not this one. You know, they, they're at Portland tomorrow. That's probably the game they might sit, guys. So, yeah, just something to note that, you know, back-to-backs, I think we're kind of on a little bit of red alert for the Nuggets. Maybe not so much now, but just, you know, down the line, something uh, we want like, for the people who are on. Oh, I, I have to turn my uh, 20 after alarms back on. And I, tur- I turned him off because uh, uh, Sam, who we work with, kept giving me crap for my alarm keep going off. So I had to turn it off. But um, anyways, you, um, so you hit the whole, you hit the whole system. You hit the whole system refresh over over the break. So got to get <laughs> got to get back into it. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense to me on the Denver side with potentially cutting down minutes. On main guys, as they, you know, their their aspirations are title focused at this point in time. But we'll note they are down to fourth in the Western Conference standings and three games ahead of Phoenix in the fifth spot. So still a decent buffer there, but um, certainly, you know, at kind of like the bottom end of this four team cluster that we've seen atop the West here for a bit. Okay, let's head to the next game on the slate, which is Los Angeles Lakers at Golden State Warriors. The top, I, I feel like I heard all over the place over the break about LeBron's potential trade to the Warriors, which obviously did not happen. Um, but he is out here tonight for the Lakers, along with Jared Vanderbilt, Christian Wood, and Gabe Vincent. So obviously, with LeBron, Vanderbilt, and Wood all out, you know those are typically their their most uh, played four power forward players. Um, so you know some minutes to take over here in the front court. Um, in the backcourt, we have Max Christie and Cam Reddish questionable with their ankle sprains. And then we also have Spencer Dinwiddie here as well for, for the Lakers, gotten in a couple games before the break, but a new piece for them still to work in. 
How do you see the Lakers playing out? Any insight here on Cam Reddish and Max Christie? Um, and then who do you expect to start in place of LeBron? Yeah, it sounds like they've got a chance for him to be out there to play, but you know, would expect them. That's uh, uh, Christie and Reddish. Uh, Reddish has been out for a while. Her, that injury looked terrible. Um, but yeah, and then uh, uh, Max looked terrible too. So um, time off there. Definitely, definitely have a shot to play. Probably with both being in the rotation, especially without Wood. LeBron, LeBron just maintenance. They're on back to back here, giving them a little bit longer All Star break uh, before they get the Spurs tomorrow and home. Um, expecting Torian Prince to start, so wouldn't be surprised though if they just start Dinwiddie. I think they like him off the bench though. Uh, who will play a ton? So again, it's going to play pretty small here. We'll see how like we'll see if they go like mega small. Probably not though. Meaning like you know Rui at the five, kind of that stuff could be on the table. But I think they're just going to run. Jackson Hayes, we saw a little bit of overlap in the last game too, but the Warriors, just it's so hard to play double big against them. So they're expecting a starting lineup of D'Angelo, Reeves, Turin Prince, uh, Rui Hachimura, Anthony Davis with a lot of Dinwiddie off the bench, a little bit of Jackson Hayes, and then we'll see if they piece together. Um, you know, If they don't have Cam Reddish and uh, Max Christie, those guys would be in maybe just one of them and they'd run mega minutes uh, if it's only one, but those guys will probably cover the rotation. Not enough for the, the Shelvin uh a Skyler maze of the world in those guys a little rusty over here now that all that all makes sense to me and you mentioned lakers definitely gonna be playing smaller without those three power forwards available we have you know a decent amount of austin reeves projected at the three tonight so a little bit of a different look for the lakers who are typically one of the biggest teams in the league on the other side of this matchup we have warriors uh which is pretty static injury report at this point chris paul mm -hmm. remains out and then Gary Payton, the second, is listed questionable with an illness. Uh, the big move before the break for the Warriors was putting Clay Thompson off the bench. Mm -hmm. um, I expect that to, to continue moving forward. Any comments here on, on Gary Payton's availability tonight and Clay Thompson's role off the bench? Yeah, nothing on uh, Gary Payton, illness tag, barely playing anyway, so not like a huge deal. Um, but yeah, uh, Steve Kerr said that Clay Thompson will come off the bench for the rest of the season for the foreseeable future, I think was the exact term. So, yeah, Pods has, has got this starting lineup. Uh, Chris Paul did practice today, so I think this is a back-to-back -to -back tag. So he's probably sitting today and then playing tomorrow. He's obviously – he is sitting today. Um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, really curious to see where his minutes are just because everyone's gotten a lot better. Uh, Pods is playing really well. Wiggins, Kaminga are all playing great. Uh, even Clay is playing better, even with the bench role there. Draymond's really turned them around, playing excellent defense prior to this game uh, that was – you know that we talked about earlier. But – um. Yeah, it's kind of kind of where we're at uh, with Clay off the bench. If if JP two can't go, you know, a little bit more minutes for you know Lester Quijones. Maybe they bring Guy Santo, Guy Santos in and up the mix, but it could just be a little bit tighter there, and you'd feel a little bit better about uh, Kaminga's minutes here. For sure, yeah, Moses Moody would be potentially back in the rotation as well. So the the Warriors here are pretty full outside of CP three. So a lot of places for the Gary Payton minutes to go if he is out. All right, we will head to the last game of the night. Relatively quiet, but we did get a notable upgrade here on the Kings side. Uh, it is the mm -hmm. San Antonio Spurs at Sacramento Kings. Front end of a back-to-back -back for the Spurs here. The Spurs pretty much just have G League guys listed out. We did get an out tag for Dominic Barlow, which is nice for us. So we pretty much know it'll be <laughs> Victor Wembanyama and Zach Collins at the center tonight. And then on the Kings side, uh, we have Sasha Vazenkov. So listed out with this angle injury as well as some G Leaguers. And then the upgrade I was referring to is uh, DeMontis Sabonis upgraded from out to questionable with an illness tag. So that's a decent, you know, upgrade for us. Do you expect him to play with, with that up midday upgrade and any other news and notes for the Spurs and Kings matchup? Yeah, not too much to add. Uh, I'm curious to see if the Champagne starter thing ends uh, with the break time. I mean, he, you got to think he's one of the, he has to be like the least valuable starter for fantasy purposes, right? Like he just doesn't play enough. So for yeah, sure. that, that's something we'll be watching. But yeah, you know, Wemby or his minutes going to come up a little bit more. I think that's on the table. We'll be watching for that. Uh, and then yeah, uh, Devin Vassell's minutes have been pretty solid. Um, and Kel Kelvin's minutes have been just not there, man. Uh, whether it's blowout, even when it's not blowout, uh, it's been pretty tough seeing there. But um, yeah, Blake Wesley will continue to play behind Trey Jones um, there. Sounds good. Uh, any any notes on the King side? Yeah, let's talk about Demontis Sabonis. Uh, he is upgraded. He was listed as doubtful uh, earlier today and got the Q tag upgrade. So it sounds like he's trending in the right direction. Sounds like he went through shoot around before we popped on here, um, which would be you know a huge sign. Obviously, don't really have a great read on the situation. Should have been a, a starter that had an illness tag. 
but um yeah i don't have don't, that's pretty much it you know if, if he's out and i think they would start mcgee but they could just start trey lyles there um don't have a you know just not a great read for the situation matchup wise against Wemby, you think you'd want a you know a bigger body out there so it's kind of why i think they would just go with bigger putting out like alex leonard mcgee to put some size on him and you know reduce the fouls Sounds good. I think it would definitely be a, a team approach of guarding Wemby. It'd be pretty pretty wild to see the length of JaVale McGee versus Victor Webinyama mm-hmm. uh, k- matchup tonight. So potentially we'll get that. But yeah, the upgrade first bonus is is a nice little touch here as as we cap the this 12-game slate on the first day back from the All-Star break. Any other news and notes before we get out of here, Mike? No, I think I covered it. I'm trying to think if I like forgot to mention any starters starters things we'd be watching. I think I covered all of them. So yeah, this is always a fun day. Um, really uncharacteristic for the NBA to make this Thursday such a huge slate, man. So uh, it's going to be madness. We're ready to go. I slept too much last night, uh, so that's good. So feeling refreshed and, and ready to crush today, and we'll see how much time I could squeeze in for matchups tomorrow. Another big slate. Awesome. And for people, I'm sure out there wondering what's going on with Drew Dinkmeyer. He is back with us. He's been working the last couple of days uh, on team baselines and player baselines as he typically does. And he will be rejoining Mike tonight on the DFS analysis show that we do behind the paywall DTR. So if you do not want to wait till tomorrow to see Drew's smiling face, he will be on the DFS show tonight with Mike. So that'll be great. But um, for now, that will do it for this edition of the Established to Run NBA Injury Analysis Show. As always, we ask for your support in promoting this free content by liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel by the end of the season. So please go ahead and like and subscribe our video. It does mean a lot to us and helps us continue to push out this free content for you guys. If you have any interest in getting access to Behind the Paywall tonight where Drew and Mike will be, as I mentioned, we have plenty of great stuff from Mike's matchups columns Monday, Wednesday through Friday, daily DFS analysis shows, top plays, um, and a player props package as well. So head to the ETR website, uh, backslash subscribe dash MBA, and you can see all of our potential options there. We do have some discounts here for the rest of the season as we are post all-star break. And that will do it for today. I believe tomorrow, hopefully we are back with fan Fridays, the trio of Gallagher, Drew Dinkmeyer, and Justin fan. Hopefully they are all back in the saddle. One of the best shows of the week, uh, in the NBA. So hopefully they're all back tomorrow, but That will do it for us today. Good luck out there, everyone. And uh, let's all enjoy having the NBA back. Talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.